Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to my review of the Sony a7C. I hope you enjoyed that quick cinematic intro before I actually start talking about this camera. I've been shooting video of it for the past two weeks and decided to put that little intro before I actually got into all the talking so you guys could see how this camera actually performs and what kind of images it produces. I upgraded this camera from my old Nikon D5. 300 and so far my mind has been blown for my setup to go along with the a7c I got the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 millimeter lens this video is probably going to be quite long But with a lot of information packed into it So make sure you use the timestamps which are available below before we start the review Let's have a quick 30 second key features recap Sony a7c features a 24 megapixel CMOS full frame sensor, over sampled 4K video in 24 and 30 frames per second, 1080p 2460 and 120 frames per second, 8 bit colors, S log and HLG, face and eye autofocus in video and photo, Bion Z X processor, fully articulating touchscreen, mic and headphone sockets, large Z type battery, one card slot, 2.36 M.EVF, and the price is $1,800 American. Number 1 Ergonomics The a7c has mostly the same specifications as the a7 III except in a smaller body. This means that the viewfinder on the a7C is on the left side and it is much smaller. This viewfinder is not ideal for photographers or hybrid shooters. The grip on this camera is significantly smaller making it harder to carry all day, especially for people with big hands. I have small hands. I solved this issue by usually mounting this camera on a gimbal or I also bought a top handle. There is no fun dial on this camera, however my shutter speed is always locked at 150 to follow the 180 shutter rule. And I just use the back dial to change the aperture and I use the scrolling wheel to change my ISO There is no autofocus joystick on this camera now my previous camera didn't have this feature either So I can't really give my honest opinion if I miss it this new battery gives this camera incredible battery life However, I would still recommend getting spares as this camera lasted me about eight hours of shooting on and off This fully articulating screen is a great addition on this camera It's great for vloggers and if you're shooting on a gimbal However, I have the touch ability turned off as I feel I don't use Use it at all and it gets more in the way for me than it actually helps me number two autofocus the sony a7c has eye tracking and face tracking both in photo and video the a7 III only has that feature in photo when shown side by side the a7c clearly has better autofocus in video than the a7 III the autofocus on this camera is pretty much excellent just like on the a7s III sony gives you the ability to change the speed of autofocus transition speed and autofocus shift sensitivity in the menus however the a7 7C is still stuck with the old hated Sony menus. Number three, photos. I didn't really take many photos of this camera as of right now. However, they've turned out pretty great so far. However, if you're a photographer or even a hybrid shooter, I would not recommend getting this camera. Watch my last video to find more information why this camera is mainly geared for filmmakers. Number four, video. The A7C shoots crispy 4K, which is really 6K down sampled to 4K. There is a 1.2 crop in 4K 30, which is I haven't used it yet. However, this camera does not have any crop in 1080p 60 or 120 which is very nice. The 120 frames per seconds in 1080p is a little soft but it is definitely still usable just like on the a7 III. Upgrading from my old Nikon D5 300 shooting video on this camera has been an absolutely amazing experience. Once you get to really know this camera and all the menus and all the buttons what they do this camera is so sharp and autofocus just nails it every single time. I'm absolutely loving my experience shooting video with this camera. The low light performance of this camera absolutely blew my mind and I know it could be even better if I used an f1.8 or an f1.4 lens. I mainly use S-Log2 when shooting in the daylight because I want that dynamic range and I don't use S-Log3 as I think S-Log3 is just too much for the 8-bit colors. I played around with Cine4 a bit and a little bit of HLG, however, I ended up with just sticking with S-Log2. I use a custom profile picture for my night shots which I just got off of YouTube. If you want the same low light settings as me, I'll leave a link in the description. But my S-Log2 settings are as follows. Black level equals zero, gamma is S-Log2, black gamma, the range is narrow and the level is negative five, Color mode is S Gamut 3 Cine, saturation is plus 15, 
color phase is negative 2, in detail the level is negative 4, and anything I didn't mention I just left the way it was. The A7C also has unlimited recording and no overheating issues unlike the A7C which has a 30 minute recording time limit. Unfortunately this Sony A7C is still stuck with 8 bit colors and that rolling shutter problem which occur on the A7 III. Number 5. Colors The Sony A7C has improved color science which makes it superior in color to the A7 III. The A7 III is plagued with that magenta look which no one likes and the A7C fixes that problem. The A7C has much better natural looking skin tones, however, a green hue can creep into the shadows at higher ISOs. But for me, I actually prefer this green hue in the shadows as opposed to the magenta look which looks disgusting while the green hue actually gives it a little bit of a cinematic look. However, once again, you are stuck using 8-bit colors which is not the best. Number 6, Ibis. I recorded a couple shots with steady shot off and then the same shot with steady shot on and honestly I couldn't really tell the difference. Maybe it's because my lens doesn't have OIS but I just don't see this IBIS system doing that much to affect the final image. But I use my gimbal 80% of the time anyways and I'm using a top handle when I'm shooting handheld to try and reduce some of that shake. Overall the IBIS in this camera is not really impressive for video however for photos that's a little bit of a different story. Number 7 custom buttons and the one card slot. I already discussed these issues in my last video if you'd like to watch it, but let's go over this quickly just for the sake of this review. As I know, these are big deciding factors for many people. The Sony A7C only has one custom button, however you can reprogram most if not all the buttons on this camera. I've done that and I don't find myself needing more custom buttons. Next controversial decision with this camera is that it only has one SD card slot. Now Sony could have definitely fit another slot in this camera, but they didn't and the A7 III has two. So really there is no workaround on this camera, so if you do need that dual card slot, you should probably go for the A7 III. I would recommend watching my last video if you are a filmmaker. The whole video is about this topic. But if you are a photographer or a hybrid shooter, I would recommend getting the A7 III as basically all the upgrades on this camera are geared for filmmakers. Number 9, my cons for this camera. Now let's go over some things that I don't like about this camera, and in reality there are only two things. Number one, there's no 10-bit colors, and number two, there's no 4K60. You take a look at the camera market and you'll find cameras such as the Fuji X-T3 which have 10-bit colors and 4K60 and are only half the price. But Sony didn't add these features because most of their sales for the Sony A7S3 would be compromised because this camera would be very competitive. I can definitely live without 4K60 and 8-bit colors, gotta just swallow that for now. But honestly, the colors have been coming out really great with this camera. Number 10, the conclusion. I think I got the perfect camera for me. Now who is this camera for? Once again, watch my last video for more information. But I say that this camera is great for filmmakers who are switching from another system and want to get into the Sony E full frame mount lineup but can't necessarily afford the a7s3 i think the a7c is for you this way once you get this camera you can start investing into sony e glass and over time you can get the sony a7s3 or you can get the fx6 or you can even get the fs7 they all have the sony e mount and i think this camera is a great place to start so this will be it from me for this review i hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like and subscribe if you are new to this channel 98% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so if that's you, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.